Okay, our next award is the Britannia Award for Excellence in Television. And here to present it, the only Washington associated with scandal we aren't sick and tired of hearing about. Please welcome the star of Scandal, four-time Emmy Award nominee, Kerry Washington. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a two-bedroom apartment in the Bronx. She wasn't allowed to watch much TV, but as a latchkey kid often does, she defied her parents' instructions and found ways to watch anyway. What she saw was a landscape of laughter and insight and light, people listening and people loving and coexisting as family and as neighbors and as community. And even at that young age, hiding out in her neighbor's living room, that little girl realized that there was a magical pace and rhythm to this alternate reality where your world could fall apart into total chaos, and then within about 22 minutes, it could return to calm resolve, as long as you are bold enough and brave enough to laugh about it all. That little girl was me. And the show I was sneaking off to watch was The Jeffersons. And that, and that two-bedroom apartment was apartment 12D in Jamie Towers in the Bronx. And 12D is the very same apartment number that The Jeffersons lived in. And then in the seventh grade, I made the transition from public school to private as I moved on up to a deluxe school on the Upper East Side. And I started to understand why I loved this show so much and why it resonated with me. The world of this show provided a context. And as I walked through life and as I moved on up, the show was at times a mirror and at times a map. Eventually, that map led that once little girl here to showbiz. And in a surprising twist, this past year, I found myself sitting at the proverbial table with Norman Lear, preparing for live in front of a studio audience, where I had the profound honor and pleasure of playing the Jefferson's glamorous neighbor, Helen Willis. No <laughs> Norman was shy of, two months shy of 97 at the time, and yet this man was working on set every day with a level of commitment and vitality and insight that made me think, what was younger Norman like? How could this guy have ever been any more of a force than he is right now? But the truth is Norman has always been a powerful force and has always lived a remarkable life. In 1942, he enlisted in the army and flew 52 combat missions in World War II. <laughs> he, Norman wrote comedy for Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis and the Academy Award nominated screenplay for Divorce American Style. These accomplishments would detail an impressive biography even if it didn't also include creating All in the Family Sanford and Son, One Day at a Time, Maud, Good Times, and The Jeffersons. Let, let, let me say that again. All in the family, Sanford and Son, One Day at a Time, Maud, Good Times, and The Jeffersons? I mean, think about it. It is unfathomable to contemplate the best television has offered without these shows. And in turn, it is impossible to contemplate the best of television without reveling in the legacy of Norman Lear. So much of where his maps have led us has become part of the very fabric of television. For seven seasons on Scandal, I played half, one half, of an interracial couple, Olivia Pope and Fitzgerald Grant III, with whom our viewers fell madly in love. And I realize now that there is a palpable connection through the narrative universe directly linking Helen and Tom to how people engage with Olivia and Fitz today. Norman tapped into a powerful method for making people think and changing people's minds, and it distinguishes him in this field. He has moved us forward and advanced the conversation, always with humor, always with joy. 
And it is not an ignorant joy he, con he conjures. It's not reductive or simple. It doesn't traffic in single note portrayals or stereotypes. Norman Lear's humor is born of complex humanity and layered characters in unique circumstances. It is bold, it is brave, and it is hilarious. Today we talk a lot about creating safe spaces for conversation. But I think sometimes we make the mistake of thinking a safe space means a space that is comfortable for everyone all of the time. But what I'm learning in life is that a safe space is a space where we commit to allowing ourselves to feel the discomfort of brave exchanges. And in that discomfort, we stay and we continue to listen and we continue to share with love and with joy. Norman knew this. He's always known this. He realized that comedy takes the edge off, it lets our guards down, and it allows us to create more room in that safe space for our full selves and for each other. And I think that's the magic that captured my heart as a little girl. Norman Lear's mirrors and maps were an invitation into a more compassionate and loving humanity. It's too hard to hate each other when we're all laughing together. And in that laughter is the endless opportunity for growth, mirrors and maps for us all. We are all in this family together. There's a Yiddish word, and the word is kukluffel, and that means a ladle that stirs the pot. That's what Norman is. What he would do is ask us to look inside ourselves. And I think it set a standard for how people did shows after that. So Sammy Davis gets here, you gonna call him a jungle bunny? I remember feeling like, wow, can they put this on TV? I gotta call him Mr. Davis. Oh, just a minute ago, he was the ace of spades, now he's Mr. Davis? Because he waked himself up to being called Mr. Davis, and he deserves that. Because in this great country, a man like him can overcome the unequalness of his color and rise to become a great star. Norman wanted to present both sides. You know, Archie had the conservative side, my character had the liberal side, and they went at it. What do you mean, unequalness? What's the difference between our neighbor Lionel Jefferson and Sammy Davis Jr.? Ten million dollars and five paper Cadillacs. <laughs> he always pushed us further than we might even think we were able to go. Did you know that All in the Family and Sanford and Son were based on British television shows? When we first started the show, we thought, you know, this is too edgy. I think Norman is attracted to being honest, even if it's uncomfortable. And maybe uh, some of the things you said were a little uncalled for, that's well, all. Well, no, if they were uncalled for, I wouldn't have said it. The world that he came out of, people sat around and talked about issues, and they argued, and they read, and it was fodder for discussion. It always amazed us that the conversations that they were having in the Bunkers household or in the Evans family on Good Time, the conversations that they were having are the conversations that we were having in our own home. So it's like, oh man, somebody's finally telling our stories. If you remove Norman Lear in television today, there would be a lot less color and diversity. I was your waiter when you used to come in here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't recognize your voice. Dude, the guy, hey, how come you ain't got no Chinese accent no more? I don't need it now. I own the restaurant. <laughs> he represents how America looks. What's your name? Manuel Eduardo Esteban Gonzalez Rodriguez. <laughs> oh, hell, I'm dead. <laughs> now, just because we are moving up, there's no reason why we have to look down on people. He's got a tremendous amount of energy, uh, passion, and concern about the country, and he just wants to keep going. If you sit and watch those shows, and if you, you haven't in a long time, I encourage you to do it. I think they're relevant because we see ourselves in these shows, and we see our parents and our grandparents. What makes them eternally relevant is that we don't solve those problems. I heard people say, oh, you could never do All in the Family in this year, 2019, and I always felt like they were missing the point. Those problems are here to stay. It is like looking in a mirror. Now hold it right there, Buster. Ain't you forgetting where you came from? It's not a question of where I came from. It's a question of where I am. I'm just a kid up out of here. And you know you're the last holdout. 
Archie, don't you see? The crisis is over. What crisis? Black people have arrived. They're here. I ain't letting them in. Not here. Here! It's the way I was brought up. A penny saved is a penny earned. A penny? You know who made up those phrases, don't you? Rich people. To keep poor people happy about being poor. If a 40-year-old Norman Lear appeared today, he'd figure something new out, and we'd all go, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. Why weren't we doing this all along? Norman, congratulations for receiving the Britannia Award for Excellence in Television. It's about time the encyclopedia people recognized you. The guy's 90, he's 97 years old. And you, sir, are excellent. You're finally getting recognized.